Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to start talking about pulses, waves, signals, and noise. Uh, these all basically fall under uh, signals. But we're going to start with the simplest one, which is a pulse. And we'll be using my extremely analog oscilloscope. Don't worry, we'll get into the real oscilloscope later. These are the basics, so you can understand what you're seeing on the oscilloscope when we get there. So the first thing we want to talk about <clears throat> are pulses. This is the most basic signal. A pulse is a sudden brief increase in current flow. That's it. Now, your ideal pulse would have an instantaneous rise, stay on for some amount of time, And an instantaneous decrease back to the beginning point, which in this case we'll call zero volts. But that rise time and fall time, and even remaining at our plus five volts in the real world, is never going to look like that. What you're going to end up with is a pulse that looks something more like this. Okay, now just imagine this pulse has just been kind of stretched out, time slowed, as it were. So what we have here, from this point in our signal to this point, this is our rise time. And then from this point in our signal to this point in our signal, is our fall time. Now what we see here is what is called ringing. Ringing is basically a, a bit of an unwanted oscillation. So when you really stretch out your pulse on an oscilloscope, even if it starts out with a compressed time span, you know, looking something like this, And yes, I varied that off time there, because sometimes we'll have that with pulses. Even if it starts out looking like this, when you zoom in, it tends to end up looking like that. Okay? Pulse. A brief, sudden increase in current. Next, we are going to talk about waves. I should label these, huh? Pulse. Waves. Now... For the waves, instead of using up a whole bunch of these, we'll just assume each one of these lines is zero. Okay? Work with me here. Okay, a wave is a periodic fluctuation in a current or voltage. And they may have a single polarity, DC, or they may be positive and negative components, which would be AC. There are many kinds of waves, probably hundreds of different kinds of waves. But if we start out simple, There is our basic AC sine wave, okay? That's our zero point, remember that? Now what if we have our sine wave and it looks like that? Well, that would be considered a DC sine wave, or a sine wave with a DC offset. So there's our offset between 2.5 and, and 5 volts, so call it, what, 3.25 volts will be our zero point. Something like that. Okay? Now, we can also have an AC square wave. If I can remember how to spell square. Now, this will be more properly called an AC pulse train. But for our purposes, we'll call it an AC square wave. Next, 
we will go with that one. That would be, of course, an AC triangle wave. All right, and goal wave. And right, how about this one? What would that be? Well, that would be a DC ramp wave. Some people call that a sawtooth, but I consider a sawtooth wave to be more like this. This is what we call a sawtooth. And I'm going to tell you what the difference is, okay? AC square wave, more or less instantaneous on, on for a period, more or less instantaneous off, off for a period. It oscillates from full on to full off in a very short period of time. And it oscillates about our zero point. So now the AC triangle wave has a linear rise and a linear fall also oscillating about our zero point. Now, the DC sine wave has a linear rise and an almost instantaneous fall. I'm sorry, DC ramp wave. A linear rise time and almost instantaneous fall, okay? So what we're getting here is almost a mixture of the pulse and the triangle wave. And it can go in either direction. So in this case, you would have an almost instantaneous on and a linear fall to off. The sawtooth pattern that you see here is characteristic of a charging capacitor. It's a logarithmic charging, a logarithmic uh, wave progressing there, and then an instantaneous discharge. Now we can also have a uh, sawtooth kind of goes like this. Not really good at drawing these. Yeah. All right. So there we have our logarithmic rise and a logarithmic fall. Also, I would call this a DC sawtooth. Um, then we can have a complex sine wave. And a complex sine wave would look, I don't know, something like this, and then you have the same thing here, come back. That would be considered a complex sine wave. Sine. And then you might also see, depending on, you know, what industry you're in, something looks like that, which it is periodic. You know, these things are happening at regular intervals, which is what distinguishes it from noise. This would be kind of a uh, a voice wave. Whereas noise would just, there's no real period in it. It's just the amplitude changes, the frequency changes, and that's what differentiates them. Okay? On to the next one. And now we're going to talk about a signal. And a signal is a periodic waveform that conveys information. So that voice that we were looking at would be an example of a signal. Now, a signal conveys information. I've said that in the past. And then we've also talked about modulation. The modulation is the information that rides on that signal. Remember, modulation equals information. Signals can be AC, they can be DC, they can be riding, AC can be riding on a DC level. So if you have um, a sine wave, okay, there's our straight sine wave. And then if we modulate the amplitude of our sine wave, this is AM, like you know, AM radio. 
the period remains the same. The frequency of each one of these is unchanged. Well, this one's a little bigger, but pretend they're all the same. The frequency is unchanged. This is amplitude modulation. This is just a pure sine wave. Amplitude modulation. The frequency remains the same, but the amplitude within the periodic waveform changes. That's our information. And then we also have frequency modulation or FM. In that case, our sine wave amplitude remains the same. But our frequency changes. You see, the amplitude has never changed. We have plus 2.5 volts to minus 2.5 volts. What has changed is the period of those waves. You see a difference here, small, a little bit bigger, extremely large. And that is frequency modulation. And the last thing we can talk about that is noise, which is the enemy to all signals and is a whole college course on its own called Signal Integrity. And we're not going to get into that. But just suffice it to say, if you have a nice, clean sine wave, such as this, and then it starts to look more like this, now you've got noise. And as the noise increases, your signal can look like this. You can still see the sine wave pattern, but there is so much noise there that you can't distinguish what's going on. All right, I think that's enough information to throw at you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Remember, pulses, waves, signals, noise. Here comes the train. That's it. I'm out. I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. Dollar a month is all I ask. And, uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here and there's a link to it down below.